Uh, and I would also argue that we probably don't know all the adverse reactions that we're going to get yet either. There could be some more well, still, uh, to, uh, still to raise their ugly heads. Just before we, uh, uh, we started this video, John and I were talking about some conditions I have never seen in 50 years of clinical medicine um, uh, as, as uh, vaccine-induced uh, abnormalities. Do you, do you want um, to so run through that, Robert, or do you want to go on to the Canadian data? Yeah, well, let's go on. Let's keep with the theme, John, on the Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to do that, though. Let, let's well, come well, back to that. Appetite. People want to know, really, are we talking nonsense or are we talking about a real problem? And for that, we need data, which we now have on the screen, Robert. Can I put my... This is the problem when you're seriously old and you've had your cataracts taken out. Oh, for tell the first me about time, it. You've got, to, you've got to use glasses to read. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is, well, this is the graph, basically, from the Canadian data. Yeah, it's, and, and it's a follow-up for a 33-week period, which is good. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at the number of cases along the top here. But let, me, let at, me tell you a little bit about this group because yeah, please. I don't know them personally, but I've been following their work. Uh, to me, they're the best epidemiologists in the world in following this. Uh, it's run by a, a, a professor, Sarah, Sarah Carraza. Yeah. And... Um, uh, Sarah, if you're looking at this, please answer my email because I, I think you do terrific work. Now, what this group has done, it's an official group coming out of Quebec in Canada. They've been following religiously uh, the impact of the vaccine on Canadians uh, since the time of the rollout. And so they've had about five or six studies that have been published. And this is the most recent one. If you go to the first one, it does exactly what we were talking about a few minutes ago, John, and that is it shows about 80% protection against hospitalisation in health workers. And that was present uh, for at least four months. The, the study was a four-month study. So this was terrific. This was really good news and reflects what we were talking about, that in an immunologically naive population, COVID-naive population, or relatively COVID, uh, then you have no suppressor mechanisms activated and dominating. You actually get, as you'd expect, like you do in influenza vaccines, you get protection. Now, what Caraza did is that she did every year, she kept doing these studies, and she found that year by year, the protection went from 80%. And you can see, if you look at this graph, yeah. uh, at the right at the beginning, uh, this is... Uh, uh, so we'll jump from the first graph, uh, from the first study. Yeah, that's good, John. Uh, yeah. From the first study, um, which was done back in, in as soon as the vaccine was rolled out, uh, using the same methodology uh, and, and the same general population, although uh, there are different individuals involved, um, she found that um, things had changed dramatically. And, and it's very interesting because um, here you see what other people are showing when they look at a new variant vaccine against the variant that's still in the community. So if you look at uh, what is, uh, let's just go up to the top so you can get an idea of how things change. These yeah, the, blue, the, the, this basically shows how quickly the dominant variants change so that you can see, just go right back to the beginning there, John. You can see at the beginning that light blue reflects the dominance of the variant, which was called XBB. It doesn't, we'll call it variant one that was yep. in the community. XBB, yeah. So when the XBB or the vaccine with the XBB came in, uh, it was matched well against the community virus. And for the first three months, you can see uh, one month, certainly the first month or so, uh, it's matched extremely well, but see how the dark blue starts taking over. That's the JN1. That's no, call it variant number two. Yeah. And by the time you get down to um, month number five, a dark blue comes in, which is the KP variants. Yeah. And here we are. By the time, uh, so th this is the only vaccine that's around the XBB. By the, in terms of the vaccine cycle. You, you, you've moved two major mutations away from the vaccine you actually immunise them with, which, of mm. course, has been happening year by year. And so you're a long way from the actual variant 
that you're vaccinating with by the time the new one comes up. So it's a bit uh, like the, Sydney Harbour putting up defences against battleships. Well, that's right. Well, when, when we, the real we, risk is against nuclear submarines and space well, weapons well, we and drones. Did, we, did, we, we did that when you guys were fighting uh, the, the Russians in the Crimea. We were a bit concerned the Russians might bring ships down to Sydney Harbour. So we mounted guns on a little island uh, in the middle of Sydney Harbour. Uh, it's a very good restaurant there now. <laughs> but they wouldn't protect against space weapons and drones and nuclear submarines today. Point value, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's just, we're just protecting ourselves against ancient history. It's just preposterous. Well, well it, it's, it's, it's bizarre. Yeah. Uh, and yet what is happening uh, in Australia, and I'm sure it's happening everywhere else, is that we've got people saying, hey, go and get vaccinated. And they're, they're using the data from way back in 2022 yeah. uh, when it was you know, variants away um, and, and people have changed. Um, and... and Let's just have a look at this because it really mm. tells the whole story. I, I think this is a terrific epidemiology group because they tell the truth. Um, as you can see, let's, let's go along from looking at it from left to right. Uh, and you can see at the bottom it's 2023 and then it goes on to 2024. And the, W stands for weak. So yep. you can see these are weeks after the original vaccine. Um, they put in, in about 80%. Uh, you can see there, the one you're looking at at the moment, W1619, um, they were pretty concerned because if you go up just a little bit, John, uh, you can see see that blue line going across. Yeah. That blue line is zero. In other words, anything less than zero means negative protection, and negative protection means that group of people are getting more hospitalisations from COVID than the, unimmuno the people who did not get the XBB vaccine. 51% more in that case. Absolutely. Uh, and you can see that once you get past that first couple of months, from there on, those bars that you can see dipping down beneath the zero, yeah. this is a terrifically important study. That means that that's called the... Um, um, the, the um, they're like standard error bars. They, they, yeah. they give you 95% of the population. So from about two months on, significant numbers of people are dipping below the zero. In other words, to make up that population, we're getting more admissions to hospital than the unvaccinated ones. And from there on, for about 80% of the vaccine cycle, uh, you've got probably less chance, more chance of having worse outcome than a good outcome. I and mean, this is, is looking purely at the benefit of preventing hospitalizations or side effects. This is simply looking at uh, how well the vaccine is working and how well the vaccine is promoting problems rather. And, and th this is not surprising. This is what you'd expect. Yeah. Everyone it's not even how well the vaccine's working. It is purely, it's not talking about preventing infections here, which was what we originally sold this on. It's only talking about preventing hospitalizations, nothing else. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And now, it's, increase, people, it's increasing hospitalizations by 51% at one point. Many people around the world now are familiar with the fact that you get more infections. I think the Cleveland yeah. Clinic study is probably the best way oh, they yeah. show where, where you're probably familiar with that, John, where after, if you've had three vaccines, in other words, one booster, uh, you've got twice the chance of getting an infection than the people who have not. What's important about this study, there are several things that are very important. One is it's a very, very good group. Two, um, uh, when I say a good group, they, they actually do the study in a way, it's an observational study, because remember, there are no randomised cl clinical trials showing the vaccine prevents serious disease. Not one, not one. They're all observational studies. And there's nothing wrong. A good observational study has value, obviously. Um, but what they've done, they've got individual identification markers for the people because they have... Ac so when they bring, bring different populations together to get particular outcome measures, they can actually register against the same individual. The other thing is they age stratify. So these are age stratified results. They're not just looking at young people or old people. They're actually stratified in terms of the matching between the placebo uh, and, the, uh, uh, and the active. So it's a very, very good study. And it's, one of, it's the only study I'm familiar with that's actually 
looked at the cycle of the vaccine rather than just the first two months. Mm. Rather than just looking at what you'd like to see. Well, which they want you to see. Yeah, yeah. 